Incidentally, when contacted by a Fox News producer, another of the teen girls actually queried about getting paid for her interview. It really was one of the big stories of the week, and we were talking yesterday to one of the bookers, Kim Agle, about why is it we haven't seen more of the family members and the friends of these pregnant girls on television? Well, apparently that has all changed today a little bit, right, Kim? Uh, yeah, it did a little bit, Trace. Um, I spoke to a, a young couple, the, the uh, husband-to-be, or the father-to-be, right. and the, the pregnant girl, and what they really wanted was cash. So, and that we don't do that well, at all. How does that work? That's the whole thing, as I wonder, Kim. Is it, so, we don't pay, we, just to make it clear, we do not pay for interviews at Fox News Channel yeah. in no way, shape, or form. Gloucester officials are still undecided if they should attempt to charge those who, including a 24 year old homeless man, impregnated the girls with statutory rape. As some of the sperm donors were under 16 themselves, it may be a tough one to prosecute. But some things are abundantly clear. Until getting pregnant at a young age is given the negative stigma it had years ago, we will have more Gloucesters, especially now that some of the girls who reportedly had self-esteem issues are now internationally cool. Until young parents can't pass the buck on to the rest of us to pay to support their children, more won't think twice about seeking that unconditional love at our expense. Until school districts stop circumventing parental authority right in front of our kids and giving them options of contraceptives and in some states abortions without parental knowledge or consent, kids will be sent the wrong message. Having sex is something we know you'll do and if a pregnancy happens, come to us, not your parents. And if the girls end up with babies, it's only then where the parents are forced to assume the responsibility the teens never showed. Just a few years from freedom from these young people, their parents will be saddled with having to watch the baby while the girl goes to school, does her homework, goes out on Friday and Saturday night, or just doesn't feel like getting up to change and feed that baby at midnight and 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. I'd be willing to bet not once did any of those girls talk about who was going to have to buy their baby's formula or clothes or huggies. Not once did any of these girls talk about who was going to pay for anything involving their babies because they themselves are children. They know nothing about paying bills, thus they aren't smart enough to be mothers. The boys shouldn't be let off the hook either. All those who knocked up these girls should be yanked out of school so they can get a job. These new families shouldn't be a burden to the existing families or society. Those young people made the decisions, and unfortunately for them, they need to pay for them. Hopefully by sending that kind of message, teens would think twice before deciding, collectively or not, that having babies at age 16 or below is the right thing to do. Politicians and school administrators blaming the pregnancy on budget cuts or no child left behind is lame. The 16 or belows blaming a lack of jobs in the area, thus few future options, is also lame. They'll soon realize just how fewer their options are now. Then again, we are talking about Massachusetts, where many believe it's our duty as residents to understand what self-esteem issues will lead teens to do. Maybe if they let parents be parents years ago, instead of wrenching that duty out of our hands, we wouldn't be talking about 17 sets of lives that statistically are destined for taxpayer dependency, maybe for another generation. Let's talk about their self-esteem issues five years from now. Are new developments tonight in that so-called pregnancy pact involving a group of Massachusetts high schoolers. The school's principal has been MIA until now. And brand new tonight, the pregnancy pact principal is standing by his story. Joseph Sullivan focused national attention on Gloucester High School in an interview with Time Magazine. He told the reporter, quote, a group of girls who knew each other got pregnant on purpose. He said the girls were high-fiving each other when they found out they were pregnant. And he said one of the fathers is a 24-year-old homeless man. 17 girls at the school did in fact get pregnant this year, but this week the town's mayor said she couldn't confirm any other parts of the principal's story, and she threw the principal under the bus during a news conference. Take a listen. He was foggy in his memory of uh, how he heard about the information. When we pressed him for specifics about who told him, when was he told, um, his, his, his memory failed. Well, now Mr. Sullivan responds. Rick Leventhal live tonight here in New York. And Rick, what do you know? 
Well, Trace, the statement released by Principal Joseph Sullivan tonight is extremely detailed and very long. He emphatically denies his memory is fogged at all, blasting the local mayor for suggesting otherwise, restating for the first time since the story broke that a large group of girls at Gloucester High School did, in fact, get pregnant on purpose. Sullivan says the superintendent sent, a, the superintendent sent him an email warning not to talk to the reporter, but he didn't see it until after the interview. And when she asked whether distributing birth control at the school should have reduced pregnancies, he told her a significant number of the pregnancies, especially among the younger students, were the result of deliberate and intentional behavior. I honestly do not remember specifically using the word pact, he says, but I do specifically remember telling the reporter a number of the pregnancies were intentional and that the students within this group were friendly with each other. Sullivan also says my only direct source was the former nurse practitioner at the health center. My other sources are verbal staff reports and student staff chatter, all of which I have found to be very reliable in my experience as a principal. As for Mayor Carolyn Kirk, Sullivan says, since June 11th until this day, the mayor has not called me or had any conversation whatsoever with me concerning the Time Magazine interview. The principal says he won't release the names of the girls and he won't talk about this anymore. Trace. Got a feeling we're about to hear from the mayor again. Rick Leventhal live for us in New York. Rick, thanks.